Gardening in Canada has its challenges. For one, the country basically freezes over for half the year. But first I should probably introduce myself. My name is Paul and welcome to my garden tour. So on this uh, occasion I'm going to show you uh, some of my favorite plants that I'm growing, some animals that come visit my garden and some insects that live here as well. Now I am located in Zone 6B in Canada which is a pretty cold climate. It can get down to minus 24 degrees on some occasions though typically it's minus 18 on the coldest day of the year. Now the challenge for me is that I love to grow a large variety of plants including many tropicals. So I thought I'd take you back through the last year of my garden. Hope you stay and maybe find something interesting you didn't know before. Maybe something you can use for your own garden. Ever since I bought my first house, I've been interested in growing uh, tropical plants. Or at least tropical looking plants like this trumpet vine. Perhaps this banana is my biggest success so far. Before I dug it out for winter, it was over 10 feet tall. Look how big this banana is. That's about three, four meters tall at this point. It's humongous. My hand for reference. Might as well do like a quick tour here. So this is a passion flower. It's blooming, it looks like there's more blooms coming up. And this is a bougainvillea. This is a... Uh, what do you call this? I forget the name of it. This is a basil plant, tomatoes, this is an ornamental ginger plant, this is a gardenia. This I don't know. This is a type of fruit. citrus and pomegranate. This gardenia was by far the nicest smelling flower in my garden all year. This uh, trumpet vine that I grew in front of my house was perhaps the most spectacular plant in the garden. It produced so many blooms and it lasted for at least two months in flower and it attracted later in the season it attracted lots of fireflies of course ants and hummingbirds are also attracted to these red bell-shaped flowers there was an exceptional large number of fireflies last year except very difficult to pull The occasional butterfly comes and visit, like this monarch butterfly. It's amazing that these species actually fly all the way to Mexico to reproduce and then fly back. The journey takes them over three generations. This milkweed plant is crucial for the survival of the life cycle of the monarch butterfly. I personally have seen monarch butterflies as far away as Hawaii, specifically Maui. Last year, for whatever reason, I also had lots of giant spiders.
I am not one of those people that's very squeamish of the insects. In fact, sometimes I think they can be downright cute. What the hell is that thing? It has green eyes. That ah, is freaking amazing. Hey, buddy. Can I get out of here? Get out. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Go. Go, I gotta, I gotta open the door. Get out of here. Get out. Go. A little rabbit. Let's see if we can get it. Hey, buddy. Of course, in spring, right around Easter, is when we get a new generation of rabbits. This one was uh, one of two or three in the garden this year. With winter being so long, we can't wait for spring to arrive. Just itching for that first day when it gets warm outside, where you can just step outside barefoot for that morning where the light rises over the horizon. Finally and suddenly, one morning you wake up and you find spring is here. As the temperature rises and the length of day increases, birds you haven't seen in months are suddenly back. They're looking for twigs or anything else they can use to build their nests. The muted pastel colors of spring appear. The daffodils awaken from the ground and it's time to plant new things like this peach. This is a uh, Reliance peach.
Before you know it, spring is over and a different set of visitors comes to see you in your garden. Throughout the year, I get lots of visits from animals in my garden, including uh, muskrats, which are a type of rodent. I think it's the close proximity to water because it also attracts water snakes, like this one you see here in front of my house. And on some occasions, I get visits from this animal. This is North America's only marsupial, and it's called a possum. Samuel has a very short lifespan, it's only two or three years. So it's a very nice, rare treat to see it in the garden doing its thing. So I just saw a raccoon. <laughs> I hope he's still here. The garden even produced a small bounty of fruit last year. The previous year I made the mistake of pruning the mulberry tree in the spring, which severely limited the amount of fruit I received, but this year was much better. I had lots of currants from two bushes, more than I could actually use. I used these currants to make jam for pancakes. Look at my tomatoes. It's one, two, three, four, four, and five. The fifth one in there. It's right. a beauty. So what this is, is a tomato I picked from the garden, just slice it open. Mm. 
not very juicy for some reason. Oh, it's good. Pretty much the last week or two of the mulberries. It's going all over my hands. So many birds out today. Going crazy. Basically, it's the end of the mulberries probably maybe five or six more days and they're just munching down so I've been trying to capture some video of them so that one it's gonna go in for this one's a small black squirrel I think it's gonna it's coming Change its mind. Oh, I think it's actually going for the walnuts, but they're not ready. It's a walnut tree. All right, so decided to jump down. In my backyard, I also have an English walnut that's mature and producing lots of walnuts, except I never get any because the squirrels clean it pretty well. Being on the river does attract lots of birds like this grey heron. I ended the season by planting some new plants for next year. Okay, so today I'm going to be planting a blueberry um, bush. First uh, I'm going to cut it up because there's three bushes. I think there's three plants in one box. so. One, uh, one pot, so it came uh, at least two in one, but I think there's actually three in there. So I'm going to take it out and I'm going to cut it. Okay, so I'm going to plant it right beside the yew tree. This is a mature yew tree. Basically a yew bush of this kind uh, has been allowed to gr grow. Because it has needles, uh, I think it's going to provide acidic soil. So as the needles drop, they're acidic. So I think the soil should be acidic right next to the yew. Um, and uh, basically blueberries like acidic soil. <laughs> 